Hi, I'm Kim and you're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Before I get going with this video, I just want to take a moment to thank our friend Willa very much for your donation to our channel's PayPal account. Willa, I really appreciate your continued support. Now, with that said, I want to let you guys know that uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to introduce you to a great little survivor. I'm having a small fundraiser during the month of December to get this little survivor some help, and I will introduce you as the video proceeds. I'm wanting to introduce you to this great little pal of mine, uh, and since this video is about surviving narcissistic abuse, I chose this video to do it in. And I want to talk about surviving today and what that really means. Now, I'm going to go back to a time in my experience with Trevor where through gaslighting, through projection, through absolute total mind control, manipulation, years of living on eggshells and years of just being absolutely diminished, I had been financially abused, emotionally abused, uh, verbally abused, psychologically abused, and physically abused. Now, I know some of you have not been physically harmed during the relationship with the narcissist, and I'm very glad to know that because uh, that was not the case for me, and I know it's not the case for many others. I had been horribly abused physically by Trevor. He would choke me, pin me against the wall, spit on me, throw me to the floor, and hurt me, really hurt me, bruise me, uh, beat me up, scare the hell out of me, make me think he was going to kill me this time. And all of that abuse certainly chips away at a person and certainly takes a toll on each and every one of us. But at some point, as we're deciding, you know, this is over, I, I'm done here, and I did, and that was a conscious decision. I had remained in the relationship hopeful that things would improve, things would get better, that maybe I was to blame, that maybe it was me that needed to change. And then one day I woke up and it was over. The mask fell off. I was done. I knew I was done. And though I wasn't in a position to leave that day, it took me seven months to plan my exit strategy. In that single moment, I knew it was over. And at that moment, I really felt like I had crossed over from being Trevor's victim to being a survivor of Trevor's abuse. And I know many of you don't like the word survivor because it is very much associated with the word victim. Um, what are you surviving? Well, you're likely surviving victimization of some sort or another. And I'm going to tell you, over the last three years that I've been free, I've become a real fan of the word survivor. It is that survivor status that helps pull me through during difficult times. And over the last uh, 11 months that we've been here in Mexico, things have come up. Uh, recently, Jacob was sick, and I had to remind myself, you know, I can get through this. And some days I've got to fight my way through it. I've got to fight myself into the shower. I've got to fight myself out of my pajamas. I've got to fight myself onto the street to go for a walk, to get some shopping done. But you know what? Even though I feel like I'm fighting myself to do it, I do it, and I'm winning that fight, proving over and over again that I can stand up to a challenge. I can do what needs to be done to continue trying to improve the quality of my life. Why? Because I'm a survivor. And if you're here watching this video, you're a survivor too. Even if you're still with the NARC and you're just starting to plan your exit strategy, you're going to reach the point where you can very proudly say, I'm a survivor. No, I never miss the creature. I never wish he was in my life. I never want to see the monster again. I truly feel free from it. And being free from it gives me all these wonderful opportunities in life, minus the abuse. Now, let's consider for a moment what was happening in my mind during the five years I was with Trevor. I knew it was bad. I knew I was unhappy. I was miserable most of the time. I was always afraid and high anxiety and stress and living on eggshells and picking my words so carefully and always trying to smooth things over and be a better partner to him than he ever tried to be to me. During that period, I really did believe through mind control, manipulation, and abuse, I truly did believe 
that leaving Trevor, ending it once and for all, getting away from the abuse was somehow going to be worse than staying in it. I believe that. In retrospect now, it seems insane to me, but I know many of you are in those shoes today. Knowing it's horrible, you feel bad, you're being lied to, you're being cheated on, you're being manipulated, your money's dwindling away, your career's being tarnished, you're being isolated, you feel like hell, but somehow you believe right now that leaving, stopping it, going no contact, getting that filthy turd out of your life is somehow going to be worse than remaining in the situation you're in. Surviving narcissistic abuse has really given me a sense of pride and I'll tell you, I know today that regardless of what life throws at me, I will survive it. I am a survivor and I've proven that and I'm going to continue to prove it and even if some days I feel like I've got to fight my way through a load of dishes or a load of laundry or I've got to fight myself to get out and get some groceries bought. I win those fights and I continue to win them and this incredible challenge I was facing with my once successful jewelry design business, you know what, I'm not where I want to be but I'm getting there and I'm making strides each and every day. If you're thinking for one second that staying in the abuse is somehow going to be better than getting out of it, no. No, this is simply not the case and if you are feeling that way today, I'm going to say that you're feeling that way because of the abuse. Uh, that's what this type of manipulation mind control leads us to believe that somehow getting out of there is going to be worse than staying in it and for all the times Trevor would say to me, you're nothing without me, you're going to be sorry you left, other women want me, you know. Oh God, let another woman have them. Anyone can have them as long as it's not me. But this constant beating down of your critical thinking, your ability to think critically and to think logically and think reasonably has been gravely altered. I mean, that's the only explanation I've got because logically I know, today I know sure as hell that staying in an abusive relationship is never going to be better than getting out of it. And even if there is a transition period, I'd rather go through that a thousand times and spend one more minute in an abusive relationship. I'm proud to be a survivor and if you're watching this video, you too are a survivor whether you're well into it or just starting your journey as a survivor and I think there's a tremendous amount of pride to be taken in that. In addition to that, there's a tremendous amount of knowledge because we know we've got what it takes. We know we're tough enough, we're smart enough, we're strong enough and we've got enough courage to get through the difficult things that life throws at us and everybody faces challenges and you got to remember guys that all too often a victim of narcissistic abuse sees no way out and suicide becomes an option and I too had been having suicidal thoughts but I got past that, I got out and life goes on and truly I feel very very hopeful for the future. Today I'm incredibly proud to be a survivor and incredibly proud to be a co-survivor with you all. And with that said, I want to introduce you to a new friend. Now I'm going to set this up a little bit and let you know that here in Puerto Vallarta there has always been a problem with homeless uh, street cats and street dogs. Now over the 45 years that I've been coming back and forth to Vallarta, the street dog issue has been diminished to what is now quite a manageable problem. There's just not the large numbers of street dogs that there used to be and the reason those numbers are so much lower than they had been is because of expats like me. Uh, Americans, Canadians, Brits, Germans that have made Vallarta their home and have helped contribute to this problem. There's all kinds of great organizations that help neuter and spay homeless pets, all sorts of organizations that hold fundraisers and parties uh, to raise money to get these animals shots and there's been a huge, huge impact on the number of street dogs in this area. Uh, the street cat issue then became a problem 
and the same thing. Everybody got on board and everybody pitched in and are quickly helping to eradicate that problem as well. Now, I feel that I too have to do my part here in Viarda to help with these problems. So, of course, uh, in one of the videos I did, oh, the one with Chanel, um, I introduce you to our little cat. His name is Einstein, and Einstein had been um, somehow separated from his mother. I mean, he was so tiny when we got him. He's actually still very tiny. He fits in my hands, but he's three times bigger than he was. Uh, no longer feral, very much a very friendly domestic little kitten, and Einstein's doing great. And uh, Einstein will have some medical expenses coming up very soon. And uh, that is one of the things that the fundraiser I hope to have here at the channel over the month of December will go to uh, fixing him and also to his shots and things like that. Are organizations that would help with that and I certainly can get these things done at a reduced cost through those organizations but I thought rather than adding the financial burden to organizations that are already pretty strapped we could maybe have a small fundraiser here now Einstein's not really the big issue um, about six months ago I met a dog who had been a street dog now he had been hit by a car when he was about three months old. Uh, neighbors saw him. They presumed he was dead, and his body was moved to the garbage pile for pickup. Now, he sat there, laid there all day unconscious, and he started to stir a little, and neighbors realized he wasn't dead at all, and uh, some neighbors took him in. Now, these are poor working class Mexican people and he was very 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 seriously injured his head is still slightly tipped he's uh, lost uh, about a third of one of his front paws and his backside is completely flattened and twisted so he was taken in by this family um, I was introduced to the family and I had been helping them with diapers and food. He is in diapers full time. Uh, he has to be in diapers for a number of reasons. Well, one is he goes potty all over himself. But in addition to that, to make clean up when he does go potty on himself, um, we have to keep him shaved on the lower part of his body. And in addition to that, he cannot um, retract his penis. So it's always out. And just because of sensitivity issues, we always have to keep that area of him covered because if he's not in his wheelchair, he's dragging himself and the wheelchair in itself is a real problem. Uh, that was fabricated for him when he was quite small. It's a little bit too small for him now and he's tipping himself over in it quite a bit. So I'm going to introduce you to Marley and uh, I think you guys are going to agree that he's a real champ and a real survivor just like we are. Come on. Come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, my boy. Come on, you can do it. You're doing good. Come on. Oh, you want me to get your water bowl? Come on, my boy. He doesn't go so fast, but he does get around. And he's happy. Are you a happy boy today? Yes, you are. Come on, silly. Come on, come on. And he's such a good boy. And this is Marley. Now, the vet had said to me, that there is a procedure that they can do that will help to extend his life expectancy. Now, a dog like Marley, uh, who's a good old-fashioned Mexican street mutt, love you, love you, yes, I know, you're a good boy. Now, come on over, come on, you can rest on me. Silly. Now, Marley uh, does have a wheelchair, but he really desperately needs a new one. In addition to that, he does need uh, a couple of surgical procedures and we do want to get him fixed. Uh, despite the fact he would not function like a normal male dog. Come on, bud. Come on now. You sit on me. That's my boy. There you go, big guy. Hi, sweetheart. He's such a good boy. And he's a happy dog, too. He really is. And bless your heart. Yes, you've lost some fingers, too, eh? Yeah, he's a real good boy. Now, I do realize 
um, that his life expectancy because of these injuries has been cut in half, as the vet tells me. So the vet said that he would have normally lived maybe 10 to 12 years. So let's cut that down to five or six. He's three, so it is my intention to try and help extend his life because he really is a good and happy boy, aren't you, sweetheart? And Scout just loves him, and him and Scout are just like brothers, aren't you? Yeah, you are, and he really guards the house good. He just needs a huggy so much. He just loves that. And anyway, so if his life expectancy is uh, really only expected to be five or six years, and he's three now, I really want to make sure that he lives out the next three years with family. Um, he is a lot, a lot of maintenance, that's the truth. And his diapers have to be changed so many times a day uh, just to keep urine off his skin because he gets a terrible bad rash uh, like any baby. You're a good boy. Hey. I love you, honey. And he really is a good boy. So what I was hoping uh, this holiday season over the month of December, uh, the vet said he'd... Oh, careful, careful. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I'll put you down. Careful. Are you okay? Yeah, you're okay. He's a little floppy sometimes. <laughs> you okay, bud? Yeah. Mwah. I love you. Um, the vet did say that um, having the surgery may extend his life expectancy because he's got quite a bit of damage to his vital organs. In this next clip, I'll show you him going in his wheelchair. It is a bit too small and it's tippy. It is a wheelchair that we use around the house. It's got very small tires. I mean, I'm grateful we've got it, but I really want to be able to take him outside and take him to the beach or somewhere like that. So he needs a better wheelchair. Well, first, that's not tipping over on him. That's a little bit bigger and has larger air tires because these tires are really only suitable for the tile floors. Marley. Hi, Button. What's up? Are you guarding the house? Hey? Come here. Come here. You look soon enough. There you go. That's my new friend, Marley. Come, Button. Ben. Ben. Oh, you funny boy. <laughs> Oh, you funny little guy. Yeah, you're very pretty. Hi, Scouty. I was hoping you would help me this month uh, by making a small donation to the channel's PayPal account. Um, a dollar, two dollars would help a lot uh, just to get him two surgeries. One is to help untwist his vital organs a little. The other is to fix him. Um, as I said earlier, he would never perform like a normal male dog, but he still has those urges and the vet said it would help eliminate those and reduce his stress level. And uh, of course, I need ongoing help with diapers and things like that. Uh, he needs special creams for his skin because he does, I know buddy, uh, he does get urine on himself. Uh, the other thing is uh, he's got special skin needs because he is bathed um, on average five times a day and that's just to keep his skin clean. He has a special diet to uh, ensure he can digest food okay. What you doing, monkey? What you doing? Yes, you're a good boy. And, I mean, the list goes on and on. And the wheelchair is really the big one. I've got him in his wheelchair now. But, uh, again, it's super tippy, and he gets really excited sometimes, and he goes running, and he just flops over, and it's heartbreaking. So uh, if you do feel so inclined to help a very special survivor, and, man, he is a great example of how you can survive the most horrendous, most horrendous thing and go on to be a very happy, happy, uh, unique individual. So if you do feel inclined to uh, help with Marley's care and help me to get him a wheelchair and these surgeries, I would really appreciate it. Marley actually played a really big role in me finding a love for the word survivor. He truly is a survivor and he is happy every day despite his challenges. And I want to be a happy survivor too. I want to take pride in the fact that I have been able to transform my life from misery to one of hopefulness and optimism and great opportunities. Now we got the other monkey attacking me. Hey buddy, that's Einstein. You know what? It's okay to be a survivor because the option is just terrible. 
I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you're having a great NARC-free day.